And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're taking a look at Extraordinary Adventures Pirates. This is from Forbidden Games, and earlier this year, uh, we did a playthrough of this, and it was just a prototype, and I, I enjoyed it. And now I'm seeing the final product, and this is a spectacular produced product. This is a deck building game of sorts, it's a racing game of sorts, it's a pirate game of sorts. It's a pirate game that's aimed at families, in fact, there's historical facts about pirates that are s sprinkled throughout the rules and such. It's uh, geared towards maybe a little bit of push your luck, which pirate ships on which tracks are you going to move, and building, putting cool cards in your deck. Here's how it plays. At the beginning of the game, each player is going to have a ship placed at three different ports. These ships are following three tracks that are all attempting to end up in Trinidad down there at the corner. You're going to have random cubes or crates of goods that are going to be placed on different ships that are on the board, and there's also different ports there. There's a big pile of treasure tiles, and several of these are going to be placed face up next to the board, basically depending on the number of players. You can also play an advanced variant where players will have pirates, and they have to take these pirates and and put them on different ports around the board where they can be captured or rescued yourself to get these. Now what a player is going to do is each player has their own starting deck of cards. There are cards in the different colors and each of these decks is identical. Players will be shuffling these and drawing five cards. On your turn you'll play three cards from your hand and th then draw back up to five. Most of the cards are going to have a speed on them and you will pick one of your ships. You'll see this is a speed of one, this is a speed of two, um, this one here has a sp speed of three and it also lets you get one card of your hand out of play. Get rid of them forever. It is lubber, stop vomiting and get off my ship. So when you play these, you'll pick one of your ships and move it along these tracks. You can move it along any track you want. When you move on a track, you can go forward or backwards. You might want to head towards these merchant ships because if you land on them, not only will you get the crates on them, but you'll draw the top card from this deck, which can add it to your hand. This one, for example, is two, but lets you move three on the red track only. So you can do two or three on the red track. And there's merchant captains. These cards are better as you go through he uh, through them. They're just better than your original cards. You can also go to a port, and when you land on a port, you'll be able to take cards from down here. These cards are the best of all. Like, for example, move five on one track and move back to an another track. Or move this is three, but move two extra spaces on the black track. When you put this card, you can put it in the play in front of you, and from now on, once per turn, you move two extra spaces on the black track. That's that bottom track. And so there's all kinds of cards in here. Some are just worth victory points, but they're garbage during the game. Here, a one-time use. I'll discard after playing. I can move the lead ship on one track back ten. But I think I'd rather move four myself. Depends. Some are just give you three. So these are cards that you can get by landing in ports. Also, when you land in a port, if you have the goods to fulfill one of the treasures, you can turn those goods in and take the treasure token. And you can see these are worth various amounts of points. If you're playing the advanced version and someone else's pirate's there, you can capture their pirate, which will be worth a point at the end. If your own pirate's there and you have a treasure tile that you can fulfill, you can put your tri your pirate on top of that and it will double that amount of points at the end of the game. This is going to continue, players are going to be taking turns going around the table doing this, until one ship hits Trinidad. At that point, that person gets one free leftover treasure that's still available and players are going to add up their treasures and scores from them and maybe some points from cards in here, as well as each pirate's going to get points depending on where they are on the tracks. Using this chart here for each of the track, you'll see that if I'm playing a five-player game, whoever's the farthest on each track is going to get 16 points, then 10 points, then 6 points, then 3 points. Uh, so moving along one track really far can get you a lot of points. If you're winning on two tracks, that could possibly win you the game. Whoever has the most points is the winner. This game has absolutely amazing components. From the 
awesome artwork. We're talking very, very Disney-esque artwork to the really good quality of cards. I mean, my only complaint here is I thought that the quotes are really boring. A treasure ship. He knows these islands. I don't know what, who made these quotes up. But the everything else, the cards are really good quality. These tiles are thick and have a little finish on them. They look really good. The crates are not just cubes. They're actually little plastic crates. They have a really good look to them. The pirate ships are little, you know, molds of pirate ships. And the box comes with these inserts. There's one in the box, and then the other one goes on top of it, which holds the pirate ships really well. It's just, it's a really great production. The board is beautiful. I just, this is an absolutely top-notch production. Forbidden Games just does a fantastic job on this stuff. So there you go. That's Extraordinary Adventures Pirates. It's a really simple game. I mean, you just play the cards and decide which ships to move. How you move is going to be affected by everybody else. You're both racing for those ships, but you'll notice that on along the main path, there's kind of offshoots where you can go to the ports and pick up the crates. So if someone curves off to go pick up the crates, you can sail right by them. You could sail really far up ahead before everybody else and then try to grab stuff up ahead but someone who goes slower might get more crates and more treasures than you. So this isn't some grand strategy game, but it does let you do some really cool things. It, you, you could just start sailing, but you need to stop at ports and things to pick up more crewmen, which is a little thematic there, so that you can move farther. If you never pick up new cards, your, your starting cards aren't going to get you very far. And there's a little bit of take that. I highly recommend playing with the advanced variant with the pirates there. It gives you a little bit of guessing. Hey, I'm going to go to this island and pick up my own pirate. I want to put them close to me so that I can get there fast. But if I put them close to me, someone else is going to sneak in there and capture him. But are they going to really go out of their way to capture him? Well, they might capture him and then get another good card for their deck. There's a little bit of take that cards, but they're not too many. The whole thing just has a light, fun, frothy family feel. And it's good. And if you're worried about the pirating theme, there's not much pirating. Oh, I guess you're taking these crates from people. But there's like not any kind of gore or violence in here. It's Again, the whole thing is kind of a Disney-esque look at piracy. And you're just shooting down these lanes. And for many advanced gamers, I think this game's going to be too simple for them. But I would consider myself to be an advanced gamer. And I had a lot of fun with this. I like going back and forth. It's kind of an easygoing game. It's a deck-building game where you're building your own deck of cards, but you're not buying them. You're simply moving down tracks and you can make more stops and pick up more cards and then see what happens as you go by. I don't know. I like it. And I, again, the production is fantastic. This is the kind of game that I want to see on the shelves and you know at Walmart and other games like that that people will pick up and play and say, wow, this is really good. It is. That's Extraordinary Adventures Pirates. Check it out. Dice Tower Judgment approved. Thanks so much for watching another Dice Tower video. If you enjoy our videos, subscribe to the channel for more fun, comprehensive board game coverage. Also, consider joining us at one of our events. Come to Dice Tower Retreat, a small, intimate gathering where gaming is king. Join us for Dice Tower Cruise, the largest board game cruise. Attend Dice Tower West in Las Vegas, or gaming fun on the West Coast, or Dice Tower East in Orlando, in sunny Florida. Dice Tower Conventions, the friendliest gaming conventions on Earth. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.